Hey everyone, I'm Scott. Welcome to another HEB virtual cooking class. I'll be your host today uh, for this great class. With me as always, we must announce uh, our medi mediator, not mediator, <laughs> moderator, although she's also kind of a mediator, so it all works in the same way. Yes. My fact checker, my timekeeper, my Google uh, analytics, uh, everything while we're on the show here, Charlotte Samuel. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I will be um, your commentator for this evening's. Um, uh, You're also going to be my mediator, so I threw yeah, that out there as well. Yeah. So game time festivities. So yeah. Uh, now, Charlotte, I happen to know for a fact that there is no bigger fan of the big game and the game of football itself than Charlotte Samuel. Is it not true, Charlotte, that you watch every football game from the start of the season to the very end of the playoffs? You're there at every single game. You want to see everything. You're all in on all football. Is that right? It is true that I have not seen a football game in <laughs> oh. the past 10 years. Good, good. We're on good terms. So this is, this is what this is all about, guys. <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> it's, it's sports ball. Uh, this is all about the big game. We're doing recipes that populate uh, how to get your table populated for all the great things uh, during the big game. So if you're like my friend Charlotte and you haven't seen a football game in 10 years, don't worry because I think the marketing genius of the final game is the fact that they do all these great commercials, right? So we have all these great commercials to keep the interest of those who are really into the game, whether your team made it to the final game or you're, uh, you're just rooting for two teams you don't know anything about and you're doing that, fantastic. Either way, we want you to know that uh, in this experience, if you're gonna be hosting or going to somebody's house, we've got some great kicked up snacks we're gonna show you. And we're gonna start with Charlotte, a jalapeno popper, twice baked potatoes. So just imagine. Okay. You've got your, your spread here. The great thing about all this stuff yes. is these recipes are all easy enough to do in this hour along with us as your guides so you can follow along. Now the baked potato, these twice baked potatoes, sometimes depending on the size of said potato, can be a little bit bigger. So it may not quite cook in the hour time we do this. However, every single recipe I'm gonna show you, everything you can okay. do ahead of time, which is great because you can Ooh. bake potatoes ahead of time, cool them when, when it comes ready to get them, when the guests are arriving the hour before, fire up the oven, get it all mixed together, make the sauces, let it all sit. Or it can all be done a day in advance, which I'm gonna show you. So jalapeno popper, twice baked potatoes, I'm gonna take you the whole process. Next, we're gonna do our lemon infused cocktail shrimp with herb chutney. So here's the deal. If you were, Charlotte, yes. to go, you know what? I'm gonna go to HEB, I gotta grab this stuff from my spread. We have everything you could possibly, and I've got some really great show and tell for you guys. Uh, yes. From party trays, from bakery party trays, deli party trays, meat and cheese, uh, our fantastic, produce party trays, the vegetables. But we're gonna also show you now our meal simple, we carry cocktail shrimp. Sorry if you know this, we sell cocktail yeah. shrimp. Ready, already steamed, ready Love to it. eat. And you have cocktail shrimp. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna kick this up a little bit. We're gonna use some shrimp. I'm gonna show you how to make a little lemon infused cocktail uh, with our water here, salt, water, bay leaves, Ooh. lemon, to make these shrimp really kind of pop, have great flavor. However, if you're like, look, I wanna skip this step, Scott, let's do the shrimp. You can take those same meal triple shrimp, a little lemon zest, a little bit of lemon juice, toss them all together, and you've got that same kind of like lemony shoes, and you can just serve that along with the cocktail sauce. It's fantastic. I like that. All this is easy to do. It's all make ahead of time. The chutney, the romesco we're gonna make next. Blistered shishitos. Charlotte, do you like shishitos? Are you a Love fan of them. shishitos? Love them. Shishitos? It's like playing roulette with a pepper. I love it. I love it. it. They're great. She's right. If you don't understand what that means, playing roulette with a pepper, basically one in every five or six of these shishitos has that kind of I wouldn't say, I mean, would you say, I'm a, I'm a, what's known as to be as a great spice wuss. So you can tolerate spice obviously more than I. Do you think like the heat level of one of these, if you get that surprise roulette pepper, are you like Serrano No, it's habanero? not that hot. It's like, okay. it's like on the poblano side. Okay, so like maybe a spicier kind of poblano. So yeah. it's got a little heat, but you're not like. But every now and then you get one that's like, ooh, hey. It's a little numbing? Yeah. All right. I just worry because I think like when you think of filled peppers, people are like, oh, I can eat a handful of habaneros, no big deal. And I'm like, I'm not, I would die. I'd be that guy that's like on the ground going, Ehh! as your like throat is on fire. So we're gonna make that. We're gonna make a delicious smoked almond romesco with some of my favorite uh, new almonds. So if you haven't seen these, Charlotte, I don't know if you've ever walked the uh, salty snacks yes. and nuts aisles at HEB. We've got all these great new yes. almonds. And I happen to, this is my favorite. We have like wasabi. We have all these different flavors, some sweet and some savory. They're fantastic. They have that fantastic select ingredient check marks. I'm gonna use some of these smoked almonds for our romesco. It's really, really good. The great thing about all these sauces, both the herb chutney and the romesco sauce, keep in your fridge for up to five days, use them on anything. Use them on fish, use them on chicken, use them on any possible way you want. So they're good even after the big game. All right, let's get into this. Okay. Twice baked potatoes, Charlotte. 
I hate to admit this. I, uh, I don't think, I was, in, I was in my 20s, I think, was the first time I ever had a twice-baked potato. What? Is that weird? You know what? No. I feel like... It's not weird. It's not weird? No, it no all depends on, you know, the foods and flavors that your family like to cook. And twice-baked potatoes were just not on the docket. They just weren't, they weren't there. I grew up a family of non, not real cooks, so I didn't have a grandma. I didn't have those great recipes of all, right? like, the biscuits and all these great things. We're like, what are you going to bring? I'm like, I'll bring something in a package you just open and serve. Like, it was, that, was our, that was the way we rolled. But you know what? We lived, we learned, and now we've got some great new things. I'm going to use my Lone Star Russets. Um, you can use whatever uh, potatoes you like in this thing. Um, if you want to, if you don't like russets or you have some baby red potatoes or some baby gold Yukon potatoes, even some fingerling potatoes, you can even hollow those little guys out. Whatever potato you want to use, potato? Potato. Potato, potato. Hey. Whatever, pot <laughs> whatever potato you want to use, you can definitely use. I just happen to be using russets. And the reason being is because I kind of want, you know, it's the big game, right? We want to kind of have something that's reminiscent of a football. It so, looks like a football. It kind of has that little, like, right, laces out. See, I little, do know what <laughs> shape the ball you know, is for this game. Look, you know, I thought in rehearsal, you know, we said, like, I was going to set you up for this, like, you know, you'll be this, like, ultimate football fan. And you, you didn't, we didn't go there. You look, didn't lie. I'm, I'm mad about it. I'm here for the snacks. I want to watch the commercials, right? Here for the snacks. And I want to eat the snacks. And incidentally, since we're talking about commercials, yeah, H-E-B is having a... Special big game commercial, so y'all should. HEB has a special yeah. big game. Can you it, tell me anything about it? I can cannot. You, you can't tell me. No, is you're it gonna all? have is to watch it until yep. the day of. I was sworn to secrecy. Are you in it? You tell Maybe. Me that. Is it a sports ball fans in it? Is there a sports ball <laughs> theme to it? Is it? You're a... just gonna have to watch the game. You know what? This is no fun. This is why I come to these classes because I want to find the inside scoop, and you just basically teased this whole scoop. So I have no. So we have nowhere to go from here. All right. So we'll have to watch. We have now. We have to watch the commercial. So record. The big game, so that you, can, you don't miss any of the great commercials because there are a lot. Okay, I have my baked potatoes in here. My baking potatoes, ready to go. Again, any potato you want to use is totally fine. This is how I bake mine. A little bit of olive oil over the top. A nice little sprinkling of salt. Just give them a little shimmy shake to kind of coat everything. Shimmy, shimmy shake. All right, a little salt, a good amount. Again, we're just going to season the outside of the skin a little bit because, again, we are going to eat the whole thing, right? We're I use the love whole... tater skin. They are good, I right? I eat it. I feel like there was all those great restaurants in the 80s, like the, the Bennigan's, the Chili's, and all those that had, like, that was, like, the fried potato skins. That was, like, the appetizer. Oh, so good. That was where, uh, that's where these get their inspiration from. Uh, okay, so that is it. Now, we need some foil. We're going to cover this up. Now, you could use this. This is, this is serious. This is, like, I could, this doubles as a knife. I could cut things with this. This is thick, thick foil. However, we don't need this for this application. If you have this, you can feel free to use it, but I'm going to use the other Texas Tough Foil. I'm pretty sure you could roof a house with that stuff. You can. Uh, I've fashioned a shiv for, uh, to protect myself once upon a time with uh, the Texas Tough Foil. It can be done. Uh, I just want you to know that this foil is also our Texas Tough. Thicker, stronger, fantastic. This is all you need for this job right here. Just cover it up. Now, you can poke holes in the potato. Sometimes it helps let the steam out. You, yeah. told, you totally can. I did before, but this time I just cover it up. I don't want to remove it. So I'll just bake them like this. It's all going to be fine. Is Into this going to help make that crispy crust? Are we still going to get that crispy skin? Oh, yeah, because we're going to put them in the oven. We're going to get okay. these nice and baked. So typically, the reason why we're doing this now is it could take up to an hour to an hour and a half, okay. depending on, number one, how hot your oven is. I've got mine at 375, but every oven's got some hot spots. Give it a rotate about 30 minutes into cooking just to make sure if it's real hot on one side, you get that nice even cooking. But usually takes, I find, 45 minutes up to an hour, 15 sometimes, and just let it steam. If you've overcooked them and you kind of pull the foil off, the best thing to do so the skins don't start to really split and open up, take the foil off, let them sit on the, somewhere just that's kind of cool, and they'll kind of like start to kind of collapse a little bit so they don't just, don't just let them steam because that way when you go to pick up that skin, will just be like straight okay. off. Okay. I mean, there it is. Just slide right off, which we don't want. Okay, so we have all the stuff to make the interior of our baked potato, twice baked potato, right here. So I'm going to set that aside because right now we do need to get our shrimp going because I want to cool these off. So in a nice big pan, I've got a K&T Dutch oven. Well, kind of. It's a nonstick. What do you call this kind of pan? It's just a nice... It's a stock pot. It's a, a stock pot. pot. If I may take you back to once upon a time, the fairy tales like Hansel and Gretel. I imagine the witch would have a, a pot similar. A cauldron? It's a cauldron, yes. <laughs> it's similar to that style because it's got that like, so imagine if this were big enough 
you know, to where... Did you just allude to... Cooking children? Yeah. No, that's not what I was alluding to. I was simply alluding to a fairy tale, Charlotte, and you took it too far. No, it's a cauldron-style pot. I love this because it's nice and wide at the bottom, and it kind of comes back up together, which I really, really like. So we're going to let that get hot. Before we do that, I have about a half... The, the uh, recipe calls for about a half gallon of water and about a quarter cup of salt. You just want this to be nice and salty like the sea because we want, for those who have been to a good, uh, you know, good cocktail party or you're going to a party with a lot of finger foods, at every point during this, we want to set you guys up for success. So whatever it is we're cooking, we want to make sure there's flavor throughout everything. So yes. whether somebody doesn't like the cilantro in the chutney or they don't like mint or they're like, ah, sauce looks weird, and you don't have cocktail sauce, we want the shrimp to be able to sing on its own and be like, oh, these are the best cocktail shrimp I've ever had, but well, we're going to infuse it because we've got some salt, we're going to add some bay leaf, we've got some lemons. So I'm going to take our fresh lemons over here. So are you doing a play on a very traditional court bouillon? Kind of. Okay. I'm not going as far to like put the wine and some okay. of the other stuff in there, but yeah, I'm doing very similar, yes. All right. So i got some lemons here, my fresh lemons. Now I did, you'll notice this, check this out, Rob. I happened to find at my local H-E-B the seedless lemons. Those are the ones I like to pick up. That way I don't have to worry about seeds floating around. I can let this go. So in this goes. I'm sorry, is that a real thing or did you pick the seeds yeah, out? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a thing. I'm, I Straight up, I would never lie to you about things I find at H-E-B, Charlotte. I found we have seedless, seedless lemons. Seedless lemons. They're giant, they're Get big, they're town, beautiful. This is the one right here. Check this okay. out. You want to see a demo? Kind of now. Do you think, what's the probability that they may have missed one and there may be a seed in this lemon? Well, if, um... I get a dollar if there's a seed in it. Are you it. ready? Yeah. Here we go. Ta-da! Boom! No seeds in this lemon. Seedless lemon. Does that mean you owe me a dollar because you're I'll give you wrong? a dollar. I have a dollar. I need it. I'm in. I'm in. Well, you take four quarters. <laughs> yes. Speaking uh, of dollars, do you do like yes. the Super Bowl squares? Oh. Yes, I do. Uh, wait, uh, I do. We, uh, but you know what's funny? Is when we do big game, we typically do the college football championship squares. Got it. Okay. Because I feel like sometimes big game, and there's a lot of money betting. I hate, this is, me, this is just me, I hate to gamble. Because I feel like it works so hard for my money, and just to watch it, like, just go poof, I'm with like you. This. It's like, it'd rather just drive down the highway and just throw it out the window, and somebody eventually <laughs> will appreciate it more, I guess. This is kind of my stance on it. Okay. All right. Let's make the filling here, shall we? I'm excited. So I'm going to get this hot. While this is getting hot, I've gone ahead and taken all my shrimp here. And just kind of taking them off. So I'm using the jumbo peeled divay. Let me show you which ones I got here. Okay. I love these shrimp. I love these shrimp in so many applications. I love them for the cocktail shrimp we're gonna use today, but I also love these anytime you're gonna do like a pasta dish or whatever. I like to have those really big shrimp that just kind of because obviously these look big right now. We're gonna cook them, they're gonna shrink a little bit, right? So I like to have big shrimp in my pasta, my cocktail sauce, whatever you're using them for. So I love those big colossals, a great catch, they're great. So that's gonna get a little heated up. I'm gonna add a little more salt, just kind of feeling like I didn't quite give it as much salt as I should have. Now, Scott, we had a question. Were those peeled and deveined? Yes, these okay. are the peeled, deveined, but they have shell on. So they have the shell on okay. kind of, but they're kind of, they're halfway processed, but it's just easy. That way you just soak them in water, peel the shells off. And honestly, I love the shells on in those kind of shrimp because you can actually take those shells and make a stock out of it for Ooh. like your, you know, like your seafood, like you make a little, you know, seafood pasta or whatever, like a seafood stock, like a chopino, that kind of soup is really, really good. So keep the shells. How about you a chowda? Even, yeah, a chowda, a good chowda would also be good. But you can also just take those shells and if you're not going to use them immediately, throw them in a freezer bag and just freeze them. Take all the air out, freeze them in a freezer bag and use them whenever you want them. You throw them in there because they give you such good, rich, shrimpy flavor. Okay, so we got to take our, uh, so here's some baked potatoes I did earlier. So again, I want to make this something to where you could, Charlotte, Mm -hmm. If you're hosting the big game, you could go, look, I don't have time to do all this a day of. I got a lot of other stuff I want to do. Got to organize, clean the house, whatever it is. So you can, everything can be done a day ahead, right? Yeah. So I did these potatoes yesterday. I baked them off. I cooled them. So that way I'm, I'm working with a cool potato. But let me just show you how I'm processing these. I got my, uh, and yes, Charlotte is a borosilicate uh, casserole dish. Upwards of uh, taking lots of heat and going from a cool, cool refrigerator straight to an oven. It can also do that. Now, uh, earlier, I said that I'm going to try and do this, and I don't know if I have all the support of uh, my leaders, but I have, a, I have an option to, uh, I think we should take these borosilicate bowls, because I really tout these borosilicate bowls pretty heavily in all they can do and how well they uh, work. Uh, we're going to take it to 
Hawaii, and I'm going to cast the borosilicate into the lava to get it hot, and then I'm going to pull it out, and then we're going to see if I can bake something with it. So I don't have full support on that yet, but I'm feeling pretty confident it'd be a pretty fun test to do. Okay, all I'm doing here, I'm going to hollow this out to about an eighth of an inch. So you're if leaving I hollow a little out, bit of, a, of, a, of like a... I'm just creating a, just a center of your spoon really, really okay. gently. Again, these are nice and cooled at this point. I know the recipe says kind of when to do it while they're warm. It's that same day, but I'm just showing you can also get ahead. This is all about helping you out. You don't want to go too, too far because if you go too far, then you run the risk of, oh, see what I just did there? So you split. So when I start filling these, yeah. if I have too much of the potato gone and I just have the edges, there's a good chance like this, like right now, structurally, I'm no engineer, but this structurally, <laughs> this guy over here, we could have a blowout on this yeah. guy here. See what's a little thinner? Gotcha. So you want to make sure, you can see these guys, you want to make sure you give a little bit of that room so when yeah. it bakes, it'll stay crispy. And that way you're walking around the party, you've got one of these versus like... Like a potato taco. Exactly. Potato taco that's shaped like a football. You know um, what? I like to use my ice cream scoop for that instead of a spoon. So just you saying. You can also use an ice cream scoop. But you see here, I've got my, uh, my skins all out. So here's what I do. Because again, when we baked these potatoes, you just saw me, I seasoned the top really, really well, but I didn't season the actual meat of the potato. That meat is going to be seasoned in a second with all kinds of different stuff, but I want to make sure I season this because here's, here's what could happen at your party. Cream cheese is going to go in. I'm going to start mixing this earlier. If you're at your party and say you have somebody that just likes the filling, there's a chance that that person, let's call that person Sid. Sid decides to come by and start eating the filling out of all these skins. Safely, he does so. He just removes it with a spoon and takes it out. Then you have the skin <laughs> and you're like, okay. Why would you do like? Why would you give me just the bland like what Sid? What's going on? He's like, well, I still the skin's all right. So if we season the skin. We just you'll thank me later when Uncle Sid decides to go in and start eating all the filling out of it because the filling, Charlotte, is basically mashed potatoes. Is what yes, we're basically getting that's at, what right? a twice baked potato is. But I also season the shell of the potato because when I eat a twice baked potato, I eat the mashed potato part out first, right? Uh, so you're so you're I, Sid. I eat the there yep, I'm Sid, but then. Welcome, Sid. I use my shell, okay. a potato shell, to as almost like kind of like you would a bread, <laughs> and I use it to sop up all of the other goodness on my plate. So, do you use this as a multi-use? This is, becomes, in essence, a spoon for you to walk yes. around the party and scoop into salsa. A and bulldozer, shovel, backhoe type thing to get more delicious stuff into my mouth. Okay, you there heard I said it, it here, Charlotte Samuel's party. Now, are we all going to get the invite to the Samuel? The Samuel. Uh, yeah. Big game party. Come Everybody, on over. Everybody's invited. All right, we got some butter. Four ounces of butter. Yes, a good amount of butter. I'm going to melt that in my microwave real fast while I'm mixing all this. So I cooked a bunch of bacon, but I want to say in the bowl so far, we've got the cream cheese. I got the green onions. I have the buttermilk. Mm -hmm. I have a little bit of garlic powder. Okay. I can go one of two ways here. Let me show you my bacon. So we got these bacon pieces. We have the bacon bits that are ready to go. Okay. Or you can cook off the bacon, however you want to do it. I've also cooked off some of our center cut bacon. Look at this. Charlotte, I'm going to let you decide because I will crumble this lovingly with my hands. Okay. Big chunks in here. Or I can do the already pre-diced bacon. What would you rather I do? Um, I would like to see you crumble the bacon that you, you so lovingly cooked. Butter. Lots of butter there right in go. there. So crumble this bacon. So yeah. this, this too easy. This you want me to. I want to. Yeah, come on. I'm going to muscle it in there. This, oh, is a cooking, this is a cooking show. It is. I'm going I'm I'm to. I'm I'm I got you. All right. But I do like that you have those bacon. bacon. Now, how much bacon? Um, we have a question. Two cups. Two cups. Two now, cups, kind of chopped. Just okay. two cups, kind of broken up bacon. So could you say that was about what, like uh, one package of bacon? It's, yeah, it's a little bit more depending on what you, I like the center cut. So it's, it's close, depending on okay. how much you chop up. Yes. And again, bacon, one package of bacon will suffice, but yeah. two wouldn't be bad either. I mean, jalapeno popper. So I'm going to go, I tend to go a little bit more. Okay. But yes. One package of that will do. One package of the bacon will be totally fine Great. for this recipe, 100%. But I like a little bit more in here. So that's a, that's a lot of bacon, Charlotte. Is that enough for you? Um, I work? think for Did me, yes. Did we get yes. that right? All right, let me show you. So this is what we have here. I'm going to move this bacon aside since we're not doing it. So actually, move right here. Uh, I got my cheese. I got my jalapenos. So I'm going to dice up some jalapenos here. Now, in order to dice, I'm also going to give the choice. So if you wanted to, if you were kind of saying to yourself, you know what, this is too much... I don't want too much heat. I know it's a jalapeno popper twice baked potato, so we want to pay homage to that. But if you don't like the spice, I'm going to show you, you can rib the, uh, you can take the center ribbing out of both the peppers. And I'll show you this both on this 
application, so I'll have the seeds from one, okay. and then I'll rib one of the peppers and I'll dice that up and show you what that looks like. And then on the Serranos, because I happen to know because we already did this before in a rehearsal, the Serranos are definitely spicy, so I'll show you how to take the ribs out of those as well. Now, if you're saying to yourself, um, hey, this may be for kids, maybe kids coming over, I don't want to be too spicy, you can always use a poblano pepper or just omit the jalapeno pepper, but because it's a jalapeno popper potato, I think we got to use some kind of jalapeno, but again, you can kind of mute it by just peeling out the seeds and just scraping them out real good and then just dicing that. You'll still get good pepper flavor. All right, you see this? My uh, water's boiling. Yep. I'm tasting it. Shrimp is good. It's nice and salty. In goes my shrimp. It doesn't need long. Okay. Right? I'm talking just till they start to turn that pinkish color. You can already see it's already hot. But again, my water, if yeah. you were to just have this, you didn't want to do, make the herb, herb cilantro chutney, herb chutney with cilantro and mint. There it is. I'll... We're catching up. The brain is catching up. Cilantro and herb chutney here. Uh, these shrimp are going to be dynamite because we've got the bay leaf, the lemon. It's all infused in the water, making hence the infusion. I got a boar o silicate bowl standing by, ready to go. I got my little spider here. I'm going to take out everything as soon as they're cooked. About three minutes on that, Charlotte. Okay. And I'm going to dice up this. I'm going to take my glove off. I'm going to use my. So we could, in all seriousness, just take this and slice it up if you wanted big yep. things of it, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to show you this guy. I just cut him right in half here. And I just got rid of the little tip here because that's still got some on there. I'm going to take a little spoon. It's a plastic spoon. I'm going to show you. To take the rib out, all you do is just scrape just like so straight down on the board here just to get rid of it. Nice. And, on, and onto the floor, as you okay. saw right there, just right, right next to your feet. That's where you want it. So just like that. Perfect. And that's all you do to these guys. That's it. So Super easy. Pull, we do have a question. A spoon. Yes. Someone would like to know if you could use like a canned jalapeno or a pickled jalapeno. Oh, you mean like one of these tame jalapenos? Bam. Yes, you okay. can. Okay. Whatever Wonderful. you want to use. Pickled okay. jalapenos. If only you use um, the, the really spicy, the non-spicy, any kind of pepper you really want, you okay. could absolutely do. So yes, regular or pickled jalapenos is totally fine. I'm going to give us a little dice here. Again, just a real quick chop. I want a few chunks in our, okay. uh, you know, in our pepper. I want you to be able to taste the jalapeno a little bit. So again, just kind of taking the pepper. Again, I, I've ribbed it. I just kind of kind of cut it in three pieces nice like that. Skills. Uh, you know, not really. Well, you know, you do it enough, right? That's the whole thing. All right. So now I've diced this up. So here's one. Okay. That does not have the seeds in it. So I'm sparing somebody, right? Okay. We're gonna spare somebody on that. But I want to show you how to dice, which is so much easier once they're washed. Take your whole jalapeno. And I'm going to dice it right on the pepper. So we're going to go straight in like this. Just okay. make a second cut, third cut, fourth cut. I'm going to turn it like so. Oh, it's boiling over. Uh-oh, I'm sorry. I let, That's okay. No, I, you're okay. Okay. I'm going to turn it off. we got enough heat. Watch this. The lid will tell you, the, uh, the shrimp will tell you when they're ready. And they're basically are done. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'll throw those in there. So now I turn okay. it sides. we got the slices. You can see that. I'm going to turn it side. And I'm just going to make two more slices straight down. Look how clever. So that way, it's already... Easy to dice on and its, its own. It's held together. It by held that together because it didn't cut all the way in. Very clever. And that way, it minimizes my uh, my contact with the actual thing itself. And that way, you just throw that guy away, and those go back in there. Boom. Yeah. Just like that. All I'm missing now is the cheese. I have my potato. I have everything else. So I'm going to okay. stuff these, and I'm going to throw them in the oven here. I'll show you all this. This is a lot. It's a lot, it's a lot of stuffing, Charlotte. And but wait. Well, you know what? Wait, I was more. I was a little bit worried at first because I was Were like, you? that is not a lot of potato in that bowl and well, now i my faith has been restored these are going to be delicious there's not a lot of potato all right i'm gonna take these guys out because these are ready first of all do a little skim here just remove your all the lemons and everything to the shrimp bowl you can pull all those I guys can out. smell the bay it smells wonderful it smells really really good right i got some these are really nice bay leaves i don't know where i got those but these were they were ready to roll man they were big and beautiful so you see all my lemons kind of all they gave up all their fan look at those all their fantastic juices, all that stuff. They kind of, and I love this oh, too. Look at this. So all that, so imagine here. Wait, wait, wait. See all that? All that came off in the water. Whoop, move it back over. Da, 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 da. All that little innard of the lemon there like is now The infused. meat of the lemon. The meat, the innard. Yeah. I don't know. Better better my way? Better your way? Probably better, probably better your way. The innard. The meat, better than the innard. All right, I'm going to throw those in the fridge. I'm going to let those cool off for a second. I've already got some pre-made. Let's mix this, and then let's fill these. So just a cool here. fact about the borosilicate bowl that Tompkins is yes. using right now. Um, also, if you're interested in this, you can just click on the button and buy that thing right now, delivered to click your house. But right. the borosilicate bowl, so it's tempered glass, so it can go from hot to cold. 
um, quickly and you don't have to worry about it shattering or breaking. That's right. right. So, and we will do at some point in 2023, four, we are going to do the lava test. I don't know how I'm going to get that approved, but I really think we should do the lava test to where we'll see if I can actually take the borosilicate, put it in lava and cook a dish on it. Do you think we could expense the trip to the volcano? I think we, you kind of okay. have to, right? I mean, in the name of science, because you never know when, if you, you know, you happen to be a place where there's, you know, a volcano that may be active and you have borosilicate, if that's a way for you to actually use and cook on, because you know that now you have the first ever uh, lava proof cooking <laughs> vessel, I would say that's a pretty cool achievement. Right? There's got to be, that's like a Guinness Book of World Records kind of okay. thing. Okay. All right. You see this? Look at this. This is like a mashed, beautiful mess here. Best way I like to do is just get in there with your hands. Can I just have a spoon, please? Yes, you can. Oh, that's all but I need. I'm going to give you a spoon in the form of your shell here that we talked about earlier. So this is what it's going to be. Massive scoop of the fantastic. I'm put a glove on you know, here so I can get at this. I have to give it to you, Tompkins. At first when I read this menu, I was like, I'm not sure how a popper twice-baked potato works as a party food, right? I was like, I was thinking a plate. And I mean, I was digging the, the popper, but it's a finger food because it has its own shell like a taco. If I may. You're a genius, sir. I'm not a genius. I just, <laughs> I just like to have food that's shaped like footballs for the big game. You know what I mean? Like just have something you can walk around with. So imagine, I want you to just know, as you're doing this and you're just your first time putting on a big, you know, big game party, you're kind of entertaining, you're doing all this stuff. Like let's imagine if you will, they go to your house, right? You go to somebody's house. We go to Charlotte's house. She, she's hosting our big game party. And she's got these on there and you're like, wow, that's a pretty nice little vessel. And so as you're complimenting her, and this is what I would imagine she would say, you're like, oh, these are amazing. And she would go, like, she'd go, she'd, of course they are. Of course they're amazing. I, I like to get fancy with things and they're, they're amazing. And so you too can have that same hair flip moment of like, look, <laughs> I like to go big for these things. And they're, they're pretty nice to do these kind of things for my, the people that come out of my house. So this is exactly right. We're baking it. We're putting it on there. It goes in the oven. It's its own vessel and the entire thing is edible. So when you're walking around, imagine, now let's just go, let's take this role play one further. If I have my twice baked potato, what else can I have? My, so it's just not a, this is not a, whoa, whoa. It's just like, I've got it secured in one hand. So beverage, Charlotte, what am I, what am I drinking in this hand? What's going to be at Charlotte's big game party? What am I holding in this hand? Champagne? Depends on what yes. time. Yes. Maybe a beer, yes. maybe a glass of wine. Yes. Yes. Moscow mule. Yes. Is that still a thing? Is a mule yes. still a thing? Is it liquid? Yes. Is it liquid? <laughs> Can you drink it? Yes. All right. I'm just stuffing these. There is no right or wrong way. Again, this is why you want to make sure you have that nice, you know, layer of that insulation here because we're, I'm not, you can see, I am not sheepishly uh, stuffing these guys. I am making sure they are fully loaded. All the stuff is going to come together, right? We've got the cheese, you've got the buttermilk, you've got the cream cheese. As it all cooks, it's all just going to kind of gel together in this beautiful dip. I mean, I'm like, this is, these are massive scoops I'm doing here. Just kind of gently mash it down again. That's why you want to make sure you got enough. And you'll have enough here, Charlotte, to where I can give you a full spoonful of this to just have for the person making them. And if you don't like Colby Jack cheese, guess what? Use your, use whatever kind of cheese you want. I know we have some great cheese in the deli. I'm a big fan of our smoked cheeses. Smoked mozzarella, smoked Gouda, uh, smoked provolone. You can also use those if you want a little more smoky flavor to it. I'm just using a nice kind of just even mild cheese that melts really good. This guy's huge right here. I'm going to pack him. He's not, you're not quite there yet, my friend. I'm going to pack you in. I'm not, this is Look not this. just a, like a game food. This, this is, is like going on a menu somewhere. Robusto. Oh yeah. I'm this into is like, this. I love it. Up. All right, into the oven we go in this guy. Again, about 350, 375 degrees. You want to go a little higher? You can go 400 to really kind of caramelize it. I will give you a little hint on, some, uh, on a great way to uh, make them a little more brown if you like that more crispy potato feel. I will tell Ooh. you that you can bake them till it all kind of melts. Throw uh, your broiler on and leave them under the broiler. You've got the borosilicate bowl. You're good under the broiler. Let them sit for like three minutes. Okay. And you'll get that like crispy, kind of like bubble. You'll get that kind of like burned potato top to it. If you're a big fan of burned potato, you will love that way. Again, the under the broiler, the potatoes, I'm talking like six to eight inches below the broiler, you know, on an oven rack, like three minutes and just watch it. Because sometimes if your broiler is a little bit more stout, you can really get that like 
Oh, like you don't want to flambe your potatoes. You just want to get them nice and crispy on top. Okay. That's just an option. You don't have to do that. All right. Now we have our shrimp. They're cooking. Are they cooled? They're cooling off. So I baked potatoes in the oven. Yes. You got um, a question. Somebody wanted to know if you used a ice bath to cool your shrimp, or can you use an ice bath? Yes. Typically, I would, um, because there's they'll cool off pretty quickly. So I just throw them, I have a big refrigerator. So okay. yes, uh, you want to you want to throw them in an ice bath. Or just let them cool on the side of your stove for a few minutes okay. and then throw them in the fridge just to kind of cool off so they don't steam everything up. Okay. But yes, you want to do an ice bath is the fastest way to kind of cool them down and stop the cooking process. That's why I love the, the jumbo shrimp is because they're really, really nice. They look beautiful. And to plate these, because, uh, you know, cocktail shrimp, we have these great martini glasses and margarita glasses. I got oh. these from, ask me where I got these from. Where'd you get those, just Scott? Ask. Where'd you get those? It rhymes with... Belly B. H E B? Yes. You got to have an H E B. I didn't know. I could have figured a better word than Brown and H E B. H E B. It sounds like H E B. Close? Rhymes with H E B. <laughs> um, great glasses. I think they were like a dollar a piece. It was like the easiest thing in the world to do. All right. I have a sauce here. I'm going to show you. First of all, I want to show you this. We talked about the shrimp being kind of done. So here's the thing. We are here to come alongside you. Uh, those of you watching on Facebook, welcome. Don't forget, just like Charlotte said, you can always click on what you see us using, the Boros to look at bowls. We also have these. So if you are also going, look, I'm going to skip the shrimp. I'm not a big shrimp fan. I don't like working around raw shrimp, whatever it is. Don't worry. Again, we have these made in store seafood. Look, this is, shrimp is already ready to go. It's got two sides of cocktail sauce. You can throw it on a pretty plate, and it's ready to go. That's always an option. Oh, yeah, I'll leave it up there raw for a second. Dun, dun, dun. That's always an option. Again. I want you to be able to be at your party during the big game. You're making all this fancy stuff, but your first year hosting, I want you to be able to, when you make this next sauce for the shrimp here, I want people to go, oh, what is, I see the cocktail shrimp lovingly decorated on this beautiful margarita glass. What is the sauce in the center? It doesn't look like cocktail sauce. And that's, again, I want you to be able to do one of these and go, it's just this little sauce I made, no big deal. And they're like, whoa, this is crazy. What is this? And he goes, it's a little herb chutney. I just, you know, didn't want to throw, just threw something together, no big deal. So you have that because that's what I want to be able to give to you is those moments with your guests that they just go, and so I'm just assuming everybody's going to do, that's like a thing when you're I mean, that's what I do. Point. I mean, that's kind of what I do. And I, <laughs> no, just me? All right. <laughs> All right. We're going to make this cilantro. <laughs> This herb chutney, Charlotte, for our shrimp. So we've got these lemon infused shrimp. They're cooked, they're ready to go. This is so easy to do. I'm gonna show you, all right. Now I did promise you that I was gonna take the ribs out of some of our stuff. So hang on, let me put this aside. Now in, uh, in keeping with the tradition, so we have a tradition here. Rob and I have, we have we're batting a thousand. We've, so far we've had no major blow ups. Nobody's been hurt. Uh, these classes that you're watching right now, they're live, unscripted. There's no cue cards, there's no, uh, there's nothing. It, whatever happens live, happens live. So if I get uh, splashed with green stuff everywhere, then we just roll right through it, and it'll just be a towel moment where I'll wipe off, and I'll go, look, we learned something, put a lid on the blender. But until that time, we're going to continue to take risks because it looks so much cooler having the top off our blender when we blend stuff, right? Right? I'm telling you. Well, now I'm kind living. of like, it's kind am of I not cool because I play it safe <laughs> and use the, the lid to the blender? You do? Have you started doing that? I'm not a risk taker, man. Well, I just feel like this is what's, you know, eventually, you know, look, it's going to happen. We're going to get caught one of these days. We're going to put the wrong thing in there. It's going to explode. And I'll, uh, we'll deal with the consequences. It'll be fine. It'll be live on TV, and that's just how we're going to roll. All right, we're going to put in some uh, lemon juice and water first. Okay. This is the herb chutney again. This is not just for shrimp. It's good on so many different things. It's great on fish. It's great on almost anything else you could ever imagine. There's some cumin, about a teaspoon of cumin here. Our uh, green onions. Again, and, Sh and Shada, I'll be happy to tell you, there was actually no garlic in this recipe. Ah. So one, there's no garlic. Okay. We're using our green onions. You're going to have that nice aromatic. I have my ginger and my herbs here, so I'm going to move my tray out of the way. So I want to show you this. So when you use ginger, now if you're not a big fan of ginger, I am one of those people. I'm not a huge, like, ginger. I'm like, it could go either way. However, we want to pay homage to the cocktail sauce. Cocktail sauce typically has, what, horseradish in it, right? Yeah. So you get that little bit of that kind of nasally, like, yeah. yeah. Like you get, like, it kind of hits you. Now, we're not going to put so much ginger in this where you get that, but we do want a little bit of that kind of, like, all right, I feel you. And that's where the serrano and the ginger are going to kind of elevate this to being one of those olfactory clears. Okay. Is that the right word to use? Olfactory? I'm going to go with yes. Let's just so, say yes. 
I must say, yes, I, talk to me. In my mind, yep. when I think of a chutney, I think of something that is fruited, yes. almost like, um, I mean, obviously a condiment, but almost something that has like a jelly, right? Yep. So, like major grays or something like that, like that kind of chutney. But um, chutneys can also be made from herbs and um, different types of vegetables and doesn't necessarily have to be cooked either. Correct. I, I almost called that. this uh, chutney crudo, but I was like, mm, too much. Too much I mean, I would have gotten it. Well. I like it, but I'm th I'm really excited about this. Um, it's really really easy, and so I want to show you. So if you're looking at ginger, so there's there's giant thumbs of ginger we sell at H E B, and there's also smaller ones. So if you're going to use a smaller one, I'm only want about a teaspoon of the ginger. Now, if you like fresh ginger, just grate more. But I want to show you how to actually use your ginger. I don't want you to use one of those giant peelers. And if I had one up here, it'd be so great if I could show you. I wasn't planning on using it, so just if we don't have one. If you're peeling ginger that's small, there's a pretty good chance because you see all these oblong little things on here, there's a pretty good chance you're going to possibly end up like, you know, hitting yourself or cutting yeah. yourself as you're doing it, which I don't want you to do. So what I want you to do is use a spoon. Just take your spoon. Ginger has a thin enough skin to where, you see this? We're just going to start peeling it off. Yeah. Just like so. Just use your, I don't know if you can see that, Rob. Move the blender. Yeah, no, it looked great. I saw it. So it's just peeling it off. Now you can also take your knife and just do this with your knife. There's my knife at and just kind of square, square it. around it. You know what I mean? Just You just kind of go around it like so, just kind of peel it off, and then whatever else is remaining, you can kind of grab the spoon and kind of do. But I only want, like again, about a teaspoon of it, so I'm just going to peel all that skin off. But look at that. i got a whole little thumb here that I'm going to use. Thumb of ginger. All right, so I'm going to take my zester. Again, not just good for garlic, also great for ginger. I could chop this up in small pieces. However, I do happen to know that all blenders, even though I'm using my high-powered blender, the little Oster blender I have at home, it's like $12. It may not chop it up. I just chop up, you know, some ginger. There's a pretty good chance that somebody that doesn't like ginger, it always that guess, right? That once somebody that doesn't like ginger is going to get that one piece that didn't get blended, and they're going to bite into it and go, oh, and it's going like, to take their head off. So to make you want to come back to the big game party that I'm hosting, I want to make sure that the ginger is just hinted in the background and okay. not something you're going to get a giant piece of on accident in it. So I'm just going to zest it. It can also it. be kind of furry. It is. It's very fibrous. Yes. It's very, very fibrous. You're and also, right. ladies and gentlemen out there, um, I know that you hear Tompkins talk about this Oster blender that he has and that he uses. I can factually say this. Scott Tompkins does have a Vitamix uh, at his house. I do. I do. But I don't use it. <laughs> it's not my go-to because it's hard. This thing is, they're bulky, right? I bought one when it was on sale like years ago and it was like, they're bulky. And so sometimes it's like, ugh, I don't want to pull that whole thing out. So the Oster Band, that thing is like plastic. It's like, brr, it's got like four speeds and I'm, I'm good to go. All right, ginger going in. All right, my, uh, my seated, so I'm going to use two Serrano, Charlotte, and I'm going to okay. do really? how hot do you want it? I want it, I want like one Serrano hot. Okay, so I'm going to use the smaller Serrano I'm going to put in okay. whole. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut it in half here. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm also, I'm going to seed the other Serrano because I love Serrano pepper flavor, but I'm a big big spice wuss. So I want to make sure that if I do this, I'm going to use a little bit of my ginger spoon here. Same thing. Take your spoon, hold the end of it, and just kind of scrape it out. Now, I like this that. This is why I will tell you to be extremely careful. Make sure kids are not around while you're doing this because there's an awful lot of that vapor yeah. that can still burn you. And if you happen to be a kid, you're at this eye level. What are you doing, daddy? And you're doing this and you like scrape some of their eyes. Just be careful when you're doing it around little ones because you can throw some of this juice and that would be very, very bad. They might strip you of your parent of the year for getting Serrano, hot Serrano pepper juice in your child's eye. All right, so there we go. So there's my seated Serrano and my full Serrano. It's gonna be hot, Charlotte. I'm just, I'm telling I'm you right okay now. I'm okay with gonna that. It's gonna be hot. All right, cilantro and mint. Again, we've used mint so many times on this, uh, on this show and I love mint. Again, I love it in a savory application. So. This is one of those things where the mint is kind of underlying. Now you may think it's a lot of cilantro, about a cup of cilantro, tightly packed. I'm gonna throw that all in there. Rob, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a little bit nervous about this time going open blender with this because it's a chance anything could happen, right? It's not really like a vinaigrette where there's more liquid. There's a little more of the roughage in there. So we could, uh, so I really hold like, yes, the like, the juxtaposition of the uh, capsaicin, the spice, yep, and that heat, and then that cooling factor of the herbaceousness, the mint. So it's very like reminiscent of some Indian cuisine. Yes, very which much. Which I'm very into. That was the inspiration. I love it. 
That was the inspiration. So we're, I, you know, I've said it before. I think, you know, you don't have to grow up in a different part of the world to appreciate different foods, right? Yeah. Your palate speaks more languages than you do. And so I think it's finding things where you're like, man, I love these flavors together. I think that's what's great about, you know, culture and cuisine is that it really can be so many different things and you really can translate it so many different ways to so many different things that we're like, hey, I don't, I didn't grow up eating this, but I love this flavor and spice on this dish. And it's like, that's where, so I think the magic happens, right? All right. Have I got everything in there? Are you looking at your thing? Um, yes. I think so, right? Wait, did you put the mint in there? I put the mint. The mint just went okay. in there. Um, right. What I didn't tell you about the mint is I'm okay using some of the stems, the lighter stems. Right. Same thing with the cilantro because there's a lot of that concentrated mint and cilantro flavor in the actual stem. So some of the tender stems, I'm fine. When you start getting into like the woodier herbs, thyme, rosemary, take those stems all okay. the way out. Just pull the leaves off because those are, those are definitely not something you want to mess with. All right, Rob. So I have a lot of... A lot of roughage. This is it. It's a lot of roughage. So, Charlotte, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to say I'll see you on the other side. But, uh, you know, if it does work out, we're going to be uh, we're good. So, I think that's everything I have in there. You did it. I, I, I gotta throw, well, I gotta yes. throw my, I'm going to throw my oil in because this is what I'm going to do. It calls for a 30 cup of oil. Now, it would tell you normally to throw this in. Are you going to measure the oil? I'm going to measure. Ladies and gentlemen. I try to measure whenever possible. This is a very rare occurrence. Look, when I write the recipes, I want to make sure you know that I'm not just eyeballing them. I actually do write them with the intent of being measured to the T. Uh, but you can always, you know, add more or less. I'm adding okay. the olive oil. Now, in this step, you'll read the recipe. It says run it and then slowly add the olive oil to form an emulsion. Well, we're just going to throw it all together because, number one, I want to show you, it's okay sometimes to be lazy. It's okay to cut that corner and not go, I don't want to have to do that. Do I have to? I'm going to be like, nope, you don't really have to. Now, you may get a different emulsion, but it's still going to work and it still tastes delicious. Okay. So here we go. You ready? Oh. We're going to warm it up slow. Come on, Vitamix. It's all going to catch at once. You ready? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, we didn't completely uh, we didn't completely obliterate anything, but it worked, right? I was look. secretly the hoping it, we were going to lose it. I was waiting for it because it kind of goes boom, boom, and then it just goes. <laughs> you the, just invented a new <laughs> dance. It's called the blender. Boom, <laughs> boom, hey. I tell you, <laughs> just like that. Uh, you didn't even know. If I started singing and dancing, Charlotte, it'd be a whole different kind of show. All right. So that is out of the way. I don't know what kind of show it'd be. It'd just be a different kind of yeah, show. Just a different kind. All right. All right. So you can see we have our chutney. We survived. We did it, Rob. One more. We live to fight another day. All right. So that goes aside. Our chutney I'm going to put into a nice little bowl, which I have somewhere over here. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it into my other bowl because I've already got some made that I made earlier because I was thinking ahead and was like, hey, you know what? You can get ahead on this. So here we go. We're going to add that. Look at that color. That is so Once beautiful. It sits. And then once it sits, you can see it got a little bit darker, but that's okay, because that's a day in advance. It's going to be a little darker, but it still has that beautiful green. Look at this. Holy moly. Oh, that on a piece of grilled this chicken or so, some grilled salmon. This stuff is so, so good. But you know oh. what I didn't do, Charlotte? What? Oh, aggressively salted. Yes, right. I didn't. I didn't hit it with my salt. I'm just, I'm, I'm oozing just over the edge here. All right, a little bit of that in there. Man, I'm like right to the gills on that one. All right, so here we go. Chutney's done. Now we're going to make our romesco sauce. For the shishitos. Now, shishitos, if you've never had shishitos, I know shishitos are a, you know, popular food, a lot of menus, just doing like a little quick finger food. Man, this is like, it's going to leak all over my fridge. Nope. I'm holding it I mean, it there was a time when shishito peppers, you could only get them in restaurants, right? Um, That's right. How do you prepare them, right? Yeah. How do we make really good shishitos? Well, I'm going to show you the last second. We're going to blister shishitos on the stove. We're going to hit them with a little bit of vegetable broth or stock just to kind of help steam them to kind of bring them all back down to earth, but it's so, so easy to do. And our romesco sauce, our smoked almond romesco sauce, I'm gonna pour it in this guy. Now, unfortunately, oh, because the good people at KitchenAid were smart, uh, they won't let me put a food processor, I can't do it without putting the top on. But the good news is, this one I found at HEB, we do this all this one at HEB, uh, it, it has a see-through top, so you can kind of see a little better. There we go, all right, ready? We're gonna make this romesco sauce. Okay, so, romesco. Tell, so romesco sauce is a Spanish sauce. Thank you. Um, and 
really quickly, we had a question about the shishito peppers. Yes. Sh since we're talking about Spain, this is really relevant. Um, are shishito peppers the same as padrone peppers? So they're, they're, they're different. From what I understand, the padrone pepper is a little bit different from the shishito. Shishitos are like longer and skinnier, where the okay. padrone is like, they're both similar, I think, though, in what they, like, like one in every five okay. or whatever is hot. Yeah. It's harder to find padrone peppers, I feel okay. like, here, though. You can find shishito. I know we sell shishitos pretty much year round. Yeah. Um, I know they, they're, they're a pretty popular pepper, but they're, I like shishitos. I mean, I love padrones too, but I think yeah. padrones tend to be, I think a little bit higher heat wise, okay. but I think in, in one in every five, maybe a little bit hotter. Okay, great. Um, I don't get, to, I don't get, to, I don't get to play with padrones enough because usually when yeah. they're here, they're only for a, it's a short season. It feels like, or we just don't, we just don't get them either way. I use them interchangeably in recipes. There, I said you can, it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I love these though because these are in essence like, come on, it's like it's meant to be kind yeah. of dipped in a finger food. So I'm gonna set these aside. Those are ready to go. Move this guy out of the way here. So here's the sauce: our H E B Piquillo roasted peppers. About eight ounces, almost the whole jar. It usually okay. ends up being right around the jar. Drain it out, throw them in here. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, will this little food processor handle all this? We're going to find out. Two cloves of garlic, smoked paprika, of course, some uh, of my sun-dried tomatoes. So you can use... Are those in oil? Those um, are in oil. Okay. I also have some that are just the dried ones you can get, too. Yeah. You can use these. I just feel like it's going to be a little more coarse in texture. I like the oil cured, which is what I meant for the recipe. Okay. Um, but if you have... These at home, you can totally use those as well. Just maybe a little more chunky in there. Um, I just like the oil cured because reason why I feel like you have to have tomatoes or they have the sun-dried tomatoes in this romesco is because those sun-dried tomatoes, you have those concentrated flavors, right? Mm -hmm. And sun-dried tomatoes, like tomatoes, have that natural umami flavor. So you get really yeah. those nice notes of that, like those kind of depths, and it plays really, really well together. A little red wine vinegar or sherry vinegar. I yep. love sherry vinegar as well. Our smoked almonds, when we talked about H-E-B smoked almonds, some in there. I love, it sounds so weird if you're like, this doesn't make any sense to me, Scott. Like, I promise you, the way everything kind of blends together becomes a little bit thicker of a sauce. You don't really taste the nuts as much, but they just provide this texture and this body to the actual sauce. Like and a, a, little like olive a oil. smoothie, yeah. like creaminess. So good. Smoked almonds, like they're ju not just for snacking. I mean, you could top stuff with them. I put them in salads. Absolutely. Like, I love it. So we're gonna put the lid on. Now, this sauce, I did promise you, so these sauces can be kept up to a week. So the cilantro or the herb chutney and the smoked romesco. Ooh, you see that? It's like magic. Nope, the tops. This is the, uh, you know, sometimes we rehearse, sometimes we just fly by the Dinner the and a show. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, oh, all right. So uh, what I love about the, uh, I totally lost my train of thought because I was like, I was so intrigued about the fact that I was like, how did I just make that thing turn on? It's like magic. I hit the button, it's up top, there we go. Um, no, but you can use these sauces as uh, for chicken, like this one's fantastic on salmon or any kind of white fish, firm flesh white fish, anything you wanna grill, great on vegetables on the grill. It's, it's pretty yes. much like you can use these on anything. Look at this. Who said this little guy won't take it? We do sell this little guy at the HEB, so if you and would like to do magic at home, you can just up. click on it and buy that guy. <laughs> In four, three, Two, one, there is our romesco. Now I am Beautiful. gonna hit this little bit of salt because we have some salty elements, yes. Okay. The uh, piquillo peppers have a little bit of seasoning to them. The smoked almonds obviously pretty well seasoned, but I wanna make sure because you know other elements don't have a lot of seasoning to it. Like the uh, you know, sun-dried tomatoes have a little bit, the umami. But I wanna make sure everything plays well together. Garlic, I wanna make sure it's all mashed up. I don't want Charlotte to get that big piece of garlic in there. Where no, she's thank like, you. I'll have this on toast, please. Thank you. And you can, you ready for this? The taste. So you can see the texture here, and if you can see that, Rob. Nice and nutty. It just has body to it. All right, ooh, mama. All right, let's start plating, ready? Yes, I am ready, okay. but you'd never ask. A little bit of our romesco sauce. We're right into a little bowl here. As much as you need, again, get ahead. Big game stuff. You can totally get ahead on this. And I encourage you to get ahead because everything will taste just as good as is. I think I got to stand up. There we go. All right, shishitos. Here we go. How much time I got? Enough time? Hot pan. A little bit of oil. I'm guessing I do have time. I've got some time, Charlotte. Time? Yeah, man. You have all the time in the world. Well, don't say that. Not all the time. Do I have all the time I in the world? plenty of time. Got all the time in the world. I've got a little flare up over here because you can see I lost my bay leaf. My 65,000 BTU stove here is going to make sure, made quick work of that guy. All right. 
Get it nice and hot. A nice, this is my, uh, this is one of our HEB K&T pans. I love these. I don't know if this is a titanium one. This is one of our new ones and I love these. The nonstick, they're fantastic. Get it nice and hot here. A little salt and pepper is all I need for the shishitos. That's all we're gonna start with, a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna move this guy out of the way here, Rob. So um, one see of our viewers effect. has a question about yes. the peppers. Could you do the peppers on a grill? Yes, absolutely. If your big game party food is being done outside, if you're planning on making like the full, like hey, you're gonna do ribs and brisket or whatever you're gonna do when you get on the grill, absolutely throw these on the grill. I'll show you what you're gonna look for in these. Let me move this aside. Our twice baked potato shot, I haven't forgotten about those. I actually did and I'm glad you reminded me I about them. I never forget until I forget. And then I forget, but then I'm not forgetting right now. Will that make sense? Look at this. Stop! So, now I oh. wanna show you this because I did allude to this earlier. I did, oh look at that, it's getting hot over there. Ooh, getting hot. I put these under the broiler for like three minutes, six inches underneath. So you can see there's a little bit more of that kind of brownness underneath. That's what I want. You can leave it in the oven a little bit longer, but this, just like so, is fantastic. Now, because this is our, our k and boro silicate, I'm gonna serve it just like this. What do you think okay. about that? You I, all right with that? I don't move our shrimp care out about how it is served to me. As all I want served. to do is eat it because potatoes are my love language. Yeah, they are. French fries, right? Isn't that your big, yeah. uh, I almost grabbed right here and I was like, that would have been. So like, you know, everybody says like, oh, what is the food that you would eat if you were stuck? Like if you could only eat Desert one food Island. every day for the rest of your life and it yeah. would be the potato. It's perfect. It is the, per it, is, it kind of is the perfect food, right? It is. All right. I'm going to throw, oh, that guy. I missed that guy. He, did, he didn't look as happy as the other ones. All right. A little salt. Those are A beautiful. little bit of pepper. I wish you going to let those go. And I'm going to show you what you're looking for. You want a little bit of color on each side. So you're going to get a little of that blistering on each side. Same thing if you were grilling these. You just want a little bit of that kind of charred pepper look on either side. And then we're going to see that. Nice hot pan. See how they're starting to kind of turn. We're just going to keep this rotating. These only take like three to four minutes to cook. This is a totally a la menu thing. A la menu means at the last minute. And what kind of oil did you use in that pan? That was a little bit of vegetable oil. Okay. You can use olive oil. Vegetable oil is totally fine. Um, I'm going to do a little green onion here because I want to make a little... I, want a little, I need a little garnish for this stuff, Charlotte. I need a little garnish. I love it. A little bit of our green onions over the top of our potatoes here. Man, I love twice baked potatoes. Ooh, they are tasty. All right, I'm gonna save this guy. So when did you have your first, who, who introduced you to the twice baked potato? So, uh, great question. Um, when I lived in LA, which was quite a while, we went to, a, there was this restaurant I forget what it was called. It was owned by a football player, funny enough, because um, <laughs> we we're talking about big game, but it was a, it was a like high-end Southern fair. So it was like Ooh. really, really good, like soul food, but it was really done with like, you know, total like white tablecloth Michelin style feel to it. And it was amazing. Okay. And they made these twice baked potatoes, but they were tiny ones. I don't know what they were stuffed with. I just remember being like, what the heck? I was like, it like broke my mind. And I was like, this is really, but and you realize I'm like, oh, this is a, that's a thing. I was like, I didn't yeah. know. That, that was like actually a, you know, I was like, oh, people actually, people make these. But he just made them really, really good. They were amazing. All right, so you see my little peppers here? I yes. want to make sure you go until they're all kind of have a little of that blistered look to them. Yes. Again, not just because you want to make sure they're cooked, because that little blistered flavor on there, that's all part of that flavor. Yes. All right, let me do the, uh, let's do the cocktail shrimp, shall we? Please do. Please do, and I shall. Here we go. All right. Holy moly. Look at how full this guy is. I could have, you know, I could have probably taken a little. That's really little hot. <laughs> that really pan beautiful. looks super hot. All right, look at this. Here we go. All right, it is really hot. They're blissing our peppers here. All right, you see those? I just, every time I do this, this is a great way to practice keeping stuff in when you're trying to flip. Every one of these peppers keeps jumping out. Here, you're going back in. I'm getting you back in there. You're not, yeah, get you're not running away. All right, those are going to go. I'm about probably 30 seconds away which is enough time to get this plated up here. Put some gloves on. I'm gonna use my, what do you want? Margarita or martini glass? Margarita! Margaritas, here we go. All right, those are going. Get these gloves on. Again, this is ready to eat food. It's ready to go out to your friends and family here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the sauce. Let me get a bigger <laughs> spoon here. All right, here we go. So a little bit of sauce, the bottom of our glass. Whoop. Oh, one missed. You see that? A little drip on the side. That's all right. All right, shrimp, right over the top. I can hear it's ready to go. You ready for this? We're going to blister these real quick. 
They're blistered. Quarter cup of the saw, of the liquid on top. Steam them, turn Ooh. off the heat. Heat off, that way what stuff we started to do, all that beautiful, like, whoa, is it like steaming up in here? Hello. Uh, once we start to kind of caramelize them, they're gonna get a little bit tight. We're gonna steam them so they kind of soften a little bit. Sorry, right, here we go. We're gonna plate up these cocktail shrimp here. Again, as big as you wanna go. I like the tails on these, Charlotte, just because it looks prettier. I love there that. We go. Around our little glass here, you know, individual. This is like another. This is a Valentine's Day dish too, by the way. This, could this totally is be great a, if you were gonna serve it like at the table. But to be honest, one of my hands is is being occupied with a beverage, a beverage, a beverage, a beverage. right? So the other one needs to be free to dip into random things and put in. So exactly, I would probably serve them family style ish. I like but that. I love this presentation. We could do that. Beautiful. That little bit of vegetable stock at the last second is so crucial just to kind of help steam them and soften them a little bit. And then here we go, around the plate. This is how you're going to serve them, just like so. Kind of line them all up. Woo! One of those is hot. I can, I can taste the uh, capsaicin in that bad boy. I love the way it smells in here right now. It smells really, really good. Cut the fan off. Look at that. Ooh, look at this little guy. That's mine. Put that guy out there. All right, shishitos right on there. Again, you know, for the big game, if you're looking to kind of, just looking to kind of change it up a little bit, right? So we have this beautiful kind of like, when they come to your house, you could have all these great spreads. Let me just do this, because I know we're wrapping up here. You have your shishito peppers, a little bit of that romesco right on there. Ooh, yeah. Oh, hot. Whoa, five. Nope, I dodged a bullet. I thought it was gonna be hot, but all right. I love it. Green onions at the top. Look how done. beautiful. Let me those. show you this real fast. Again, we are here to support you in whatever you want to do. And in honor of the big game, Charlotte found these. Can I just brag on these for a second, Charlotte? Yes. I didn't make them. I just found them. Party trays shaped like footballs for your big game party. Can you get out of town? Look at this. I know, so right? So you can make it from scratch. You can go to the store. We're here to help. That's what we do at HEB. Uh, for these great things, you can always look at it, check it out. These are all in store. These uh, the football charcuterie trays are so fantastic. They're so All the cute. stuff we could do there. <laughs> I love the football. Um, everything you need to set you up for success, don't forget. Uh, if you want to check out more classes, always go to our website, hub.com slash classes, and check out what you missed. Don't forget, go to YouTube channel, youtube.com slash heb. Check out all the fantastic content for the last almost year and a half we've been doing this. So many great things. We'll cook along with you. You can stop, fast forward, rewind, whatever you need to do. We'll get you where you are. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We hope your big game party is a big success. Charlotte, we'll uh, put your address underneath for everybody to join yeah, you at your that's house. Great. We'll do that. All right. We'll have um, that in the chat absolutely. in a second. Absolutely. And uh, our next class coming up is all about soup. Soup. Our right? soup class. That's exactly yep. right. Guys, thank you so much. We will see you next time. God bless and uh, have a great, great day.